Google Analytics, three reports that will blow your mind, okay? And I have a special guest with me today, Eric Square. And Eric is a uh, an expert, actually, in uh, helping organizations make decisions about their website, as it says right here, social media, email, and based on data, not guesswork, right? So what's working, what's not, let's look at what's actually happening. And we'll be talking about three specific uh, Google Analytics reports by the way, this is a live presentation. It's not a uh, slide. So Eric will be digging into Google Analytics real time, live without a net. All right. So take it away, Eric. Thanks, John, for the intro. So I wanted to show you three reports that will really help you up your game. This first report that I want to show you is a top content dashboard. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. In Google Analytics, you can create a dashboard. Then you can share it. You can email them a link. They can add that dashboard to their account. This is a bit.ly link, so it's case sensitive. But what I do is I copy that link, and then I go to Google Analytics. I'm, I log into Google Analytics. You can see here I'm logged into my account. I paste that in. So visit that link, I get a little pop-up box. A dashboard configuration was shared with you. So I'm not sharing the data that's on my dashboard. I'm just sharing the setup, the template for this dashboard. It wants me to select a view. So I want to add it to my data habits account. It's the top content dashboard. I click on create. And voila, I have a top content dashboard. So really, really quickly, for the date, May 17th to June 16th, I had not a great number of visits. Visits from search, I had 168. I had a, you know, 862 visitors, making 923 visits. And new visitors, people who hadn't been to the website in the previous two years, were 857. Um, so I'm getting a lot of new traffic, as you can see. On the right-hand side here, I can see the pages that are viewed the most. As I scroll down, I can see landing pages from search. I can see top referral content. That means that links that are coming into my site are traffic. These are the things that are generating. These are the sort of most linked websites. Really simple dashboard. What I should probably show you is where to find this. Uh, on the right-hand side here, when we're logged into Google Analytics and in the reporting tab up here, on the left side here are all the, navi uh, the main sort of sections of Google Analytics. There's dashboards, and there's my top content dashboard. So again, very simple. You'll get these notes afterwards. Follow that, and you've got a top content dashboard to add. Right, next thing I'm gonna show you is not technically a report, but it's a way of looking at Google Analytics that I think kind of adds sort of like 50% of the value of Google Analytics, just simply knowing this one trick. I might be overstating the case, but watch in a second. This answers the question like, hey, I'm curious about a particular page on my website. What do people do? Where do they come from? on this page, where do they go afterwards? What the heck is going on with this one page, right? So, where do we go for that? Normally we go to, on the here I'll show you, we go to behavior, site content, and all pages. Then I'm gonna show you the navigation summary. So here we go, I'm gonna go to, on the left hand side here, I'm in the reporting in Google Analytics. I scroll down, behavior, site content, all pages, right? So that's where I am. So now I'm looking at the different pages on my site, sort of ranked by how many page views they get, right? I'm really curious about this one, which is a set of Google Analytics tutorials that people can sign up for at datahabits.com slash learn, right? So I go here, I, that's my second most popular page at a piddly 73 visits. But now I'm on that page, I'm looking at that learn page and I can see how many people came to it. I wanna now scroll up and go to navigation summary. And here, now that I'm there, I can see, okay, how many people came to the site? But what I see is that 41% of the people over this time period entered on this site. 
60, well, 58.9% were on previous pages before they visited this page. So this is kind of useful. Um, from that, I'll scroll over, 50% of people exited off this page. They just left my website. But 49% of them went on to somewhere else on my website, right? Kind of useful to see the flows, how people navigate through the page. Here's an, another interesting thing. Here's where they came from. If they were on my site beforehand, this is where they came from. Bunch came from the home page. That's what that sort of indicates. That slash is just datahabits.com. Bunch came from a particular tutorial. A couple came from uh, different. This is looking like spam, to be honest. Some of these things, I'm pretty sure. And it's a fascinating topic. Uh, spam has been around a really long time. Google Analytics spam is uh, less than old. I'm fascinated by the topic. Uh, way too much to get into here. Um, the, this is where people went after they came to this learn page. So with 10 minutes or five minutes to go, I'm going to show you the third report. And this really is, this is kind of the whole, this is the most important report in all of Google Analytics. Um, it's kind of what I look at first uh, when I'm looking at a new client's website. The, this report immediately tells me how well their site is doing and how well they're using Google Analytics already. So five minutes might be enough to give you a sense of what this report is about. This one uh, I am going to call conversions by source medium. Um, that is a heck of a lot of jargon, but really what it means is conversions, which means goals, people who did something on your website, they donated, they signed up for your email, in the case of data habits, they signed up for your email list, they downloaded a PDF, they, um, they did something that you wanted them to do, and you have set up Google Analytics to track that particular activity. If people sign up for my email list on my site, I've set that up as a goal and it's tracked as a conversion. After that, uh, what I want to know is what brought them there? What were they doing before? Was it something I did? Was it an ad I ran? Was it a Facebook post I did? Was it, are they on my email list and they just clicked through from the email list and decided to sign up for the email list again? Okay, that's a bad example, but get what I'm saying here. Were they on Twitter and followed a tweet of mine? Where did they come from? What led to these email signups? And this one report shows you exactly where it is, uh, what's going on there. So I am going to show you live, as John says, without a gnat. I'm going to show you what that looks like on one of my unnamed clients. They've got a few more conversions than I do, but they've got a usual thing, right? Something called the homepage sign up, right? Someone comes to your homepage, they sign up. You set up Google Analytics to track that as a conversion, as a goal, right? And then you sit back, you wait for the data to come in, and you know by next Wednesday's uh, coffee break, you have this report, which is, we go down to conversions on the left-hand side, we've set up this goal, to track homepage signups, we go to conversions, overview, right? Conversions, overview on the left-hand side. I'm going to show, and then I've had a thousand of them in the last couple of weeks since June 2nd. This, these folks have had a thousand of these at 1.69% conversion rate, which means 1.69% of the people who come to the site end up signing up on the homepage. That's pretty, uh, pretty good number. Normally, uh, you'll see the goal completion location. What I want to do is click through to source medium. And now I can see exactly which sources led to these. People coming directly to the site. So direct, there's no source, there's no medium, nothing brought them to the site, they just typed in the URL. More than likely, they came from a mobile app or something that 
isn't a web browser and their web browser opened up and they signed up. So that's direct medium, 53% of the people. Second source medium here, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to make this a lot bigger. The second source medium here, Google organic, that is organic search. Google's uh, paid would be Google Ads, Google CPC, mobile, Facebook. They ref it was a referral. They clicked on a link on the mobile version of Facebook and came and signed up. The regular Facebook.com referral, they came and signed up. The Guardian newspaper, yay for the Guardian, sent a whole bunch of uh, signups. Here's Google CPC. Google cost per click, those are paid ads. That accounted for 1.59% of things. So in the last 30 seconds, what I'm gonna show you here, and this is what John and I are presenting in a uh, webinar series, a workshop series that starts tomorrow, where we're gonna get you is, our, the aim of my part of the webinar is when I click on this link, I'm curious about, okay, well, yeah, the mobile Facebook sent this much traffic. Well, which particular message was it? Was it the post I did last week? Was it the post I did two months ago? Or was it the one I did yesterday afternoon? I want to know which Facebook post brought the most homepage signups. And what I want to show you, what we're going to show you in this workshop that starts tomorrow, is that exact information. Right now, these folks don't have that set up. Um, you know, they're one of my clients, to my enduring shame, they have not yet adopted this. But what Google Analytics can tell you is not just where your homepage signups are coming from, but which particular messages accounted for what proportion of signups, which particular ads which comparing Twitter versus Facebook versus ads versus email. I think I'm over time. No, it's perfect, and Eric. Thank you. I'm going to take go. away the perfect. I'm going to take away uh, the thing. Okay, I'm going to show my screen. Awesome. Okay, so uh, that was really great, Eric. And one, um, so the top content dashboard. I love that one. That uh, basically showing people um, what their what their most popular content is, and that that can be very informative in terms of content marketing. Um, the navigation summary is so incredible. Actually, Eric just showed me this. I learned about this for the first time yesterday. And what I love about that is it shows you, the, like Eric said, the critical pages. Like, so, Let's say your donation page on your website. You would want to know which pages are the, are the most effective ones that are sending uh, traffic to your site, both um, external websites, external sources, and also internal pages in your, in your website. And with that information, you can, you can um, enhance your strategy and drive even more internal or external traffic. And then also the exits, right? So if there's a lot of people just bouncing off and leaving the site as opposed to clicking through and, and com completing an action or, or drilling into the site more, you can obviously, because you have 100% control over your website, hopefully you can you know manipulate those numbers. And then the conversions by source, I love that one because it's showing you not just, hey, people are coming from Facebook and people are coming from Twitter and this ad campaign, but even more important, what, what, what sort of marketing strategy is not only driving the most traffic, but actually converting the people? So Colette is asking a pretty straightforward question. Does Google Analytics need to be installed on your website? Now, Eric, can you answer that question in less than two words? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Next question. Um, oh, and the way that you do that, um, Colette, is you log into Google Analytics and there's an admin section and you'll um, you'll see the, I forget what they call it. It's some code. There's an area where you can basically take the code, but you will have to work with a, a web developer, a web person to install that on the website. Okay. Um, the other question Andrew has, uh, Andrew is asking, please comment on Google Analytics and sites build with WordPress using Google Analytics through plugins. Thanks. So what do you think about that, Eric? Yeah. Uh, I'm a huge fan of WordPress and uh, plugins, make, um, plugins make it easier. Uh, to install Google Analytics. Um, there's several uh, good ones out there. Uh, um, I guess there's the Yoast one, I think, which is, you know, uh, Y-O-A-S-T. Um, the, 
one thing to watch for is whether the plugin supports the latest version of Google Analytics, mm. which is called uh, Universal Analytics. Mm. Um, and beyond that, yeah, WordPress, fantastic platform, mm. plugins for analytics, very, very helpful. I think the go-to is, Sometimes, sort of, is Yoast. I think, I think Yoast is the standard among like all serious WordPress yeah. people. That's the I think that's the one yep. plugin. It's it's basically Yoast Google Analytics plugin. I don't know what it's called, but if you just search for it, you'll yep. find it, and that's the yep. one to use. Um, so that's a great one. Um, eventually, you might want to get into a little more customization. If you find that you love Google Analytics and you become a serious geek, you would want to look at something called Google Tag Manager. Uh, Google right now is offering a free course on it. It's what really allows you to do some pretty uh, very advanced stuff. So several weeks or months down the road, you might want to move on to that. Mm. Um, so now there's a question from Beth. Hi, Beth. Uh, and I met Beth last week. Um, so from the source medium report, uh, which is the last one that you covered, conversion source medium report, can you tell me if they came from your oh, – oh, can you tell if they came from your e-newsletter um, or is that combined with um, direct traffic or no? And I think what she's getting at is, uh, you know, how do you – that gets into the UTM tagging in the newsletter, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. so this is a fantastic question. Um, the short answer is that you can track your email newsletter very closely if you do something called campaign tagging, uh, also known as UTM tagging, which is which we cover in the course. It's one of the three things we cover in the course, but very briefly, it's adding a little bit of information to every link that you send out. So whether you're sending it out through email or Twitter or Facebook, it takes you maybe two minutes to add this information to the link that you send out. People go to the exact same place, nothing is different for them, but what happens is Google Analytics gets a whole lot of information. They get the fact that, oh, this person clicked on this email that was sent out, or they clicked on this particular tweet or this particular Facebook post. And that's really sort of the key to what we're showing people in this course, and, and it's a key to Google Analytics, is adding that little bit of information to each link that you send out. It takes a bit of time, hmm. but the payoff is later you can compare how your email how many donations your email brings in, how many donations your ads bring in, how many donations your Facebook posts bring in. Mm -hmm. And that is actually really useful. At the end of the year, you want to say, should we run more ads or should we do a lot more tweeting? And mm -hmm. you can say, well, ads brought in this much money, tweets brought in this much money. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. And what, so, and what I love about that, Eric, is that um, because email marketing tools like MailChimp, AWeber, uh, Constant Contact, they all, of course, have their own internal um, reports, and so you can see how many people opened an email, clicked on an email, and so forth. But really, what 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 you're talking about is okay, great. So they open the email, they clicked on it, but are they paying the bills? <laughs> you know, are they converting? Are they the, are they really completing the actions that we want them to do? And is this is, is the new, how effective is the newsletter compared to the Google Ads compared to Facebook? You know, which one is kind of converting the most? And tagging is really the key to the key to that in my mind. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, so there's another question here. Oh, uh, Charmin, uh, Charmaine says, um, can you please share the Bitly link for the top content? Um, so if you don't mind, Eric, if you could just reply to Charmin in, Charmaine in the uh, questions area, just say re send to all, just copy paste send to all. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. And then. So that's coming up. Perfect. And then Andrew, Andrew says, um, darn, I wish I, uh, I wish to take the course, but a friend is rewarding my wife with a bed and breakfast in Maine. Oh, that sounds awesome. I, I want to go. <laughs> I have to do the course though, unfortunately. Um, but it will be recorded so you can, um, always listen to the recording for sure. Uh, so, so, you know, stay tuned for that. And Samantha's asking, can you comment quickly on the difference between goals, conversions and behavior, uh, slash experiments? And that would be great. Yeah. Um, very, very quickly, I for some reason can't answer questions. Uh, maybe oh. my permissions are off. Um, oh. In fact, I can't even see questions. Oh, you but, know what? And okay. I can't. Okay. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, 
I can send out, Eric, can you just send me those bit.ly links maybe after yeah. in an email and I'll follow up with people. Certainly will. I can send my slides around. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, oh, no worries. Yeah. Okay. So the question, the question was the difference between conversions, goals, and experiments. Correct? Mm -hmm. So they're all sort of linked. <laughs> what you do in Google Analytics, and we're going to go through, is in the course, is setting up goals. So that is telling Google Analytics gives you a ton of information, but it's kind of stupid. What you need to do when you're setting up Google Analytics, other than putting the code on every page of your site, the next absolute next step that you need to take is set up a goal, which is a series of steps where you, you indicate to Google Analytics, if somebody does this, that is a goal. They have reached a goal, mm. right? So that is setting up a goal, which is sort of when somebody completes a goal, that is called a conversion. Mm. So the relationship between goals and conversions is somebody does something on your website that you want them to do, and that is a conversion. Mm -hmm. And you have set up Google Analytics that, you know, when somebody does this, that's a goal. And so, so Google in, Analytics starts a typical a, example of a goal, yeah? way, I, I think, I mean, the most common goal in my mind, and correct me if I'm wrong, is someone, um, you know, like a conversion. You know, someone signs up for the email newsletter and then they see the thank you page, right? So the goals, basically, mm. you configure goals to track the hits on the thank you page. Is, mm -hmm. is that, that's a simple, that's kind of the way that I that think is, about it. Yeah, yeah, that is one of the easiest ones to set up. When somebody sees a thank you for signing up page or a thank you for donating page, that you can set up relatively quickly without the help of a web developer. So that's probably one of the most common ones. It's it's the idea that, hey, if they're seeing this page, they just signed up or yep. they just donated or they just downloaded something. So those, that's the, so as soon as they're, as soon as they're completing those goals, that's called a conversion. So it's sort of jargon, it's, it's interchangeable. The third part is Google Experiments, which is a really interesting uh, feature of Google, uh, Google Analytics, in that you can take those goals and create two, say, two versions of your sign-up page, right? Your email sign-up page, and Google, you it takes again a little bit of a help from a developer, but not a ton. And in WordPress, you can do this quite quickly. Uh, and so what, what will happen is you'll send people to your sign-up page and Google will decide. It'll give half the – it'll run an experiment on which is the better version of your sign-up page. Half the people, it'll show one version of the sign-up page. Half the people, it'll show the other. It's running this experiment. And it will – at the – certain number of sign-ups, but it'll say, hey, look, you know, people who saw version A – uh, they only signed up 2% of the time. People who saw version B signed up 10% of the time. So this experiment shows you if people are shown, you know, which of these sign-up pages is going to work better for you. So that's actually something that's sort of built into Google Analytics, which mm. that blows my mind. You know, that kind of thing, especially even just a few years ago, that kind of thing costs thousands of dollars. If you can still spend thousands of dollars on that kind of software. Mm. Google Analytics gives it to you for free. Wow, that's great. Well, Eric, thank you so much. And if you don't mind sending me, again, those three, um, uh, I guess, dashboards, the three bit.ly links, you know, that mm -hmm. you prepared. And then what I'll do is I'll send out an email. Um, the quickest way to do this, though, for everyone who attended, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include that in the GoToWebinar message, right? So there's going to be a message from GoToWebinar about an hour from now, and it's going to say, hey, thanks for attending, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to edit that message to include those bit.ly links. So it's just the quickest way for me to do it, and I guarantee I already know all of you will get that email anyhow because you're here. Uh, and so, so just pay attention, look for that email that will be in the GoToWebinar follow-up email after this after this uh, meeting is over. Okay. Uh, so Eric, did you want to add anything else? Um, no, I think we I think we covered it. Uh, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about the possibilities of Google Analytics, and I think the key thing is that. I recognize it can be overwhelming, and uh, you know there's but there's a few key techniques and concepts that'll take it from what the heck am I looking at to letting you speak 
uh, in a really intelligent way uh, about your website. So you yeah. know what's going on, you know what's working, and you know what's not. Yeah. And it, it's just a few key techniques that require yeah. that. That's great. Um, and one more thing, just don't everybody go because um, uh, actually I'm going to share with you all right now um, an article that Eric wrote last week. And um, it really, I love it because it's it kind of says, you know, how to read Google uh, Analytics reports and it talks about the three steps. And I'll just show you this on my screen right now while we're all here. So it's this article right here. I'm going to share the link in just a second, but how to read Google Analytics in three steps, setting up goals, tracking outreach and looking at segments. Um, so it dives into that. And Eric actually has included some tutorials on here. So you can, you know, you can get started on a lot of this uh, stuff yourself. Okay. So. Uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you so much, everyone. Excellent questions. And I'm just going to quickly share the link to that article. Just You'll see it right now in the questions area, the chat window. Uh, and that is it. So this will be, this is recorded, um, and it will be available to listen to. This meeting today will be available to listen to next week. Just look for it in the, in the newsletter, email newsletter on Tuesday. Bye, everybody. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> Bye.